Thank you Gigabyte for thinking about the craters and making another perfect motherboard for the craters. Want to know what it's called? It's called the Gigabyte X570S Aero G and it's packing quite a lot of interesting features for craters so if you're one of them you want to see this board. So the motherboards that I'm showing on this channel are all related to creators and that I think are important for creators to know and this is one of them. Now it might be a little bit confusing about this motherboard because in a moment you're going to see the Gigabyte design for this and it's very similar to the Vision D line. For example the Gigabyte B550, Vision D and DP. Both of these pods have Thunderbolt and have great features but they're not X570 boards which means that some of the connectivity on the board is PCI 3.0 limited whereas this one everything is PCI 4.0 on this board. There is a few caveats on this as well which we're going to talk about so let's have a look first of all what's in the box. So we have the motherboard over here. You've got your instruction manuals, quick installation guides and you know the DVD disc if you want to you know install your things but there's more interesting things on this side. We have two SATA cables over here and another two SATA cables so that's cool for your spinning gross drives or 2.5 inch SSDs. What we have over here is a thermal probe so if you want to monitor certain parts inside your case for thermals you can use these little thermal probes over here there's another one and then we have a lot of M.2 screws there's four M.2 screws and you're gonna see in a moment why uh, an RGB 12 volt connector or extension cable and then on the other side we have this one over here this is basically a microphone and it's for monitoring the loudness of fan noise levels inside the case so if you want your fans to be adjusted by the actual volume when it gets louder or things like that then you can use this little probe over here. We have two more quite exciting things this is the Gigabyte G connector which basically all your front panel I.O. you can plug into here and then have this big one slot into the motherboard so you don't have to fiddle with small cables inside the motherboard I like that a lot I wish more manufacturers did that and then we have the PS5 style Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna connector here which is very cool, looks very cool. And if you're familiar with this, you know that this looks very much like the B550 Vision D. And it is because I think Gigabyte is actually letting go of their Vision D line and replacing this with Aero because they already have the Aero lineup on the laptops. Let me know in the comments below whether you prefer the Vision name or the aero name so let's have a look at the motherboard so first of all you probably realize that it looks very similar to the vision d previously we had vision d over here but this is all the same there is no real rgb on here this over here is a little bit blue and that's it really other than that it's black and white and i think the design looks really really cool so you know big thumbs up for me why this motherboard is different from all the other x570 motherboards well there are some others new that are coming out but basically the x570s motherboards mean that it's a silent motherboard the s stands for silent well that's what i think because the chipset fan usually that used to be or needed to be actively cooled now it's passively cooled so your motherboard is basically completely silent there is no fans in here let me quickly undo the heat sinks and show you what's underneath one of the main features that we as creators like is a lot of m.2 storage and have it as the maximum speed now there are four m.2 slots and all of them are PCIe 4.0 speeds so you can get maximum speed out of all of them I'm gonna leave the diagram of this board layout on the screen so you can easily see where there's a switch which means it's basically gonna share bandwidth between two connectors for example I think on the third connector and these SATA ports are connected so if anything is connected on the third m.2 slot over here you're gonna lose some of the uh, SATA connection over here but if someone else knows this a bit better let me know if that means that if anything is connected to that that already means that they're both running half the speeds or losing the speed 
or when both of them are in use in terms of like actually transferring bandwidth rather than just sitting on idle. So I'm not sure about that. I couldn't find any information clearly laid out about that. Maybe someone can help me out there. All of these four M.2 slots are PCIe 4.0 speeds. So if you want to run any of those Intel NVMe drives, you know, Intel Optane ones that are very long, you can use them on all of these slots because it's possible. Now we can also see a Wi-Fi card over here that's plugged in underneath the fourth M.2 slot over here which I guess it's all right and it's cool that you know if there's something else comes out you can actually upgrade it if you needed to or change it if it breaks it's nicely accessible which is cool then let's have a look at some other connectors that um, you should be interested in you have some USB uh, 2.0 connectors for your AIOs and some of the hardware that might need this you have USB 3.2 connector over here or front panel connector which is also 10 gigabit speed we have another one of those connectors over here 10 gigabit speed and we have USB-C port which is also 10 gigabit speed we've got plenty of system fan connectors over here one two three four five six system fan connectors you have your RGB connectors down here and up here if you needed to and then also over here we have your CPU fan over here and the AIO pump if you wanted to we have four dim slots and it supports up to 100 28 gigabytes of RAM. From the top down view, you're probably wondering where is the CPU connectors and they are underneath this little connector, which is very cool. If you've seen the B550 Vision DP board, then this has the same one. So you basically bend this that way and then pull this off. And then underneath you have eight plus four pin connectors, plenty of power to run all of your CPUs, even on overclock mode, if you wanted to do that. But as a creator, I don't recommend it. If you want to know why, check out this video over here. Now let's check out the IO of the motherboard, which also reveals some very interesting facts. We have two USB 2.0 uh, ports on the top over here. We have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 6 connectors over here. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 built in, which is awesome. I like that a lot. We have a HDMI out or video output and we have a display port in port. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Then we have two USB-C ports and these are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which are 20 gigabits speed, theoretical max uh, speed over there. We have USB 3.2 ports and these are six over here, which all of them are 10 gigabits in speed, which is absolutely fantastic. Audio connectors over here, including the optical output over here. Also, you have a 2.5 gig LAN, so if you're using a NAS, you can get quite okay speeds from 2.5G, which is 2.5 times 125 is like 325 maximum theoretical transfer speeds. That's megabytes per second. Now, these USB-C ports over here are basically fake Thunderbolt ports. And let me tell you what I mean by fake Thunderbolt ports. Basically, you can get a video output from these USB-C ports as well. If you connect one of your graphics card ports that, you know, would come from here, a display port to this display port in which means that basically it's going to pass through the video signal and you can get it out from this USB-C port but it's not Thunderbolt port because Thunderbolt ports have a 40 gigabits bandwidth where these ones are only rated to USB 3.2 Gen 2 which is 20 gigabits per speed so it's half the speed but it can actually transfer video out and put a bit more power out if you have some of the displays you could use them so that's interesting so it's a cool workaround to get a fake Thunderbolt port over here and last little thing over here is this Q flash button on the side over here which means that you can use a USB stick to update your BIOS which is very very helpful if you want to do it quickly and very easily. So here's the conclusion. Why is this important thing for the creators? Basically, as a creator, at least what I think, you know, what I need and hopefully you as well, what we want is a lot of storage and very high speed storage. We get all of that over here as well as transfer speeds from our front panel connectors or on the back panel IOs. We get 10 gigabits or even 20 gigabit speed. Or if you have some kind of a fancy display or you need USB-C display output, you can also do it through here, which is fantastic. The board looks fantastic and is quiet. So that's why it is awesome for creators because there's almost everything we want apart from 10 gigabit networking. So if you do want 10 gigabit networking, you might want to need a card on the you know bottom slot over here and then boom, voila, you had 10 gig LAN as well to connect to your NAS and connect it that way. But apart from that, I think it's literally perfect. Like I don't need a there's, it, there's everything that I want and it's just absolutely amazing. And it looks very cool and it fits into that Vision D lineup. 
So if you've seen my Creators PC 2021 and you can see that we used the Vision D board over there, the B550 Vision D board from Gigabyte. So now you could upgrade that board to this one, which means you're going to get better connections, you know, because it's a different chipset. You have, you know, much better outputs, but the only caveat over there is the Thunderbolt support. So if you do need Thunderbolt 3, then maybe the Vision DP is the one to go for if you really need that. But if you don't, which I don't think a lot of people do, prove me wrong in the comment section below. This is absolutely fantastic board. It has everything that I want and a bit more. That's why I wanted to show you this, because I think if you're a creator and you're planning a build, it's fantastic. And you don't need the BIOS update when you put your 5000 series CPU inside because it runs straight out of the box. So my friends, thanks very much for watching this video. If you're interested in getting one of these boards, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. And don't forget to check out the 2021 Creator PC where this motherboard would be an awesome fit in there. So you can see all the kind of layout of the PC and change the motherboard to this one. And you're going to get a fantastic best bang for buck 2021 style Creators PC. Go check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. I'll leave it linked below. As always, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. You guys are awesome.